What an exciting week it is. Today is the first tip based on our brand new release that might just be one of the most important releases in the history of user testing, surveys. Pure survey functionality is now live in user testing. Let's not beat around the bush, let's get right to it. Anytime you see that beautiful blue create test button right above me, right up there, you are going to have the option to build a survey. Right underneath, create a test from scratch, unmoderated, you're going to build a survey. Let's go ahead and click that and I'll take you through the differences. You're going to notice this is a completely new interface. It's very different looking from a standard unmoderated test in user testing. Right away up here, we've got questions, audience review, and then sessions and results. Very different from when you're building out your study and user testing. Now, unlike a standard unmoderated test and user testing, we're gonna start with our questions. And this is building out our question types in our survey. Right here on the left, you have the option to add a question. Let's go ahead and click that. You got your three question types here. You'll recognize these as being standard, survey style question types, unmoderated tests and user testing. Have all three of these, the multiple choice, the rating scale, and the written responses. What's gonna be a little bit different is the way these things look when you actually create them and see the output. So when I click on multiple choice, very similar to a standard multiple choice. You're gonna write your question here. Instead of having little radio buttons on the bottom that are hidden, you have single select or multi-select, and then you actually write your answers in when you're building your questions. And you can add more answers. And you have this extra option here to randomize the answers. Very, very important if you want to have the answers uh, be in different orders to eliminate any kind of bias in the answers, you have this randomization choice. Let's get rid of this. And we're gonna go to the rating scale. Very similar to an unmoderated test in user testing. You write your question, you have various labels that are already built for you. And then you have the ability to add custom labels with your own minimums and maximum up to 10. So lots of options here. You also always do have that duplicate option. Gonna get rid of this and we're gonna go to our written question, which again, very standard. You simply write a question. They will be given an option to write the answer. Gonna get rid of this and then we'll go to our instructions. Looks exactly like a written response. It's more about how the question is gonna render, how this line or instruction is gonna to render to somebody. Very common that we just wanna provide some instructions before they move into a different segment of the survey. Once we've done our questions, we're gonna move over to our audience builder. Very different. Normally when we're doing a, an unmoderated or even a moderated study in user testing, we usually build the audience first. But now we're doing our questions first, and now we're gonna move over to the audience builder. The audiences are over here. We wanna add an audience. So I'm gonna go ahead and say add an audience. Now look at this. You get, who do you wanna test with? User testing networks or invite via link. I'm gonna click user testing networks and you're gonna see a little bit of tweaks that we made to make this just a little bit better for you, especially when recruiting large sample sizes. So as I scroll down here, you're gonna see we've got a default of 100 participants, no criteria, no screener questions yet. And I'm gonna scroll down. We have the option to change the participant counts. You're gonna see some of the target criteria are now made available. The, the demographic filters are right in line in the page. You don't have to select them from the side anymore. Right here, I just simply just toggle one of these on and now I have the option to select different countries. Come down here, we've got, again, region. We can come down here, we can select different states if we'd like and turn that off. And then we come down age and gender. The age, this is a big, big benefit. I know a lot of people used to get frustrated that you can only do up to 65 plus. So 65 plus with no actual ability to get granular in the above 65 age range. Well, look at this. Now you can go from 18 to 90. And so you can actually select um, any range you want here and just put those in. Scrolling down, a couple of additional bonus options now. So household investable assets and savings investment accounts. That's really a, a nice level of depth onto the financial situation that we didn't have before. Coming down, similar options from before. And now we have the ability to add our screener questions. I'm gonna add a screener question. This is gonna be a little bit different than you're used to. We've got our standard multiple choice question that we write in here. We've got our options for single select and multi-select, just like when we were doing the question builder. Over here, you're gonna notice a little bit different terminology, may select or disqualify. And on a multi-select, you're gonna see may select, required and disqualify. A beautiful new addition you are going to love. Check this out right here. Qualifying logic behavior for required options. This is one of those things that trips up so many people when they're building out their screeners. The first option that is by default, at least one of the required answers must be selected. So we've added in an or, this, or this, or this. And then the other one, 
all required answers must be selected. So this is your this and this and this. And then the second one is this or this or this. So you're gonna have a much easier time getting to those people you need without having to build weird secondary questions to try to get to those exact uh, exact people. So really, really big enhancement. Then we come down here and you're gonna see new confidentiality terms. You can actually write this in however you like. You can put in here a secure URL. Instead of dragging a PDF right into the platform, you can just put a URL to take them to a page that says, yes, read these terms. And then you can customize both the content in this box and the checkbox that they have to affirm to say that they agree with whatever it was that you just showed. And so you write that here. Now you have a review option here. You can say preview the confidentiality terms, which I'm just gonna hit preview. You can see here, this is the text that you give and a URL would be here and clickable. And then here is the check box and accept and continue. Something that is super cool and brand new to user testing, you can now integrate recruiting your own people into the same study where you're recruiting people from user testing. So this first audience we created was recruiting from user testing. Now I come down here and I can just say, invite via a link. Now you can see how many people do I need via my own link. And I can add screener questions to those invite network people. So if I'm inviting people myself and I'm sending them a link, I can put screener questions in front of them, just like a standard recruit from user testing. Really big, that's a huge feature, a huge addition. I've got to interject something here right in the middle of the video. I realized after the fact that I didn't tell you this humongous advance in survey recruiting. A lot of people out there are using user testing for internal employee engagement, or they're going out to their own customers using the invite links. When you do that with user testing, it is 100% free. There are no session units being used when you recruit using a link for surveys. This is because we don't have any videos being captured like we do with unmoderated and moderated testing. So because there's no videos, there's no overhead to processing those videos and storing all those videos, it's really just raw survey data. So the cost is nothing. So you can start using this immediately to run free surveys for your employees, for your customers, if you know who they are already, if you've got them in a CRM file and you're not recruiting through the user testing contributor network, there is no compensation, but again, there is also no cost. So let's move on and start reviewing a study that I already put together just to showcase some of these great new features. You can see this is just a simple audience build. I had two different audiences. Uh, one from the United States, one from the United Kingdom. This is just a very simple demonstration to show how you can review everything here before you actually go live. And you can actually preview this as well, just like anything else. I'm not gonna go through the preview function today, uh, but I just want to show you that that capability is there. You can go and edit whatever, and I can resume my study if I wanna add more people. I'm gonna go over to the results. There are no recordings with user testing surveys. So the sessions is just gonna be a listing of the codes that go with the people that took the surveys. I'm gonna move over to the results screen right now just to show you what that looks like. This is gonna be a little bit different from the metrics tab. If you're used to the metrics tab, it's gonna be similar in some ways, but different in others. Over on the left is navigation that you can basically click to any area of the study you want. At the top of your metrics page, you now have all of the demographics of the respondents. Instead of having to click into their username, like you do in an unmoderated or moderated study in user testing, you can simply see the demographics and how the whole thing breaks out. Here, I know that's something a lot of people have been asking for with user testing. Well, now here it is delivered. So you can click on those things if you want, or you can just scroll right down through your audience. I had only one audience with this study when it went live. The untitled audience was something I added after the fact, so don't worry about that. But you can see everyone was in 18 to 25. I can come down here. They were all United States. I can come down here. And here are the answers to my screener questions. Select any big ticket items that you purchased in the last five years. This is so much more of a comprehensive view than you're used to the old way on an unmoderated study in user testing. You can see not just that this person selected a car, a mobile phone, some jewelry, a tablet. You can see how many people all together in aggregate without exporting to Excel, how many people answered this way. You don't have to build anything out yourself. And then I come down here to my questions. This is my actual survey now. These are the questions. When was the last time you purchased or leased a new car? I get some great answers here. This is multiple choice. So I can see what percentage of people answered different ways. I can look, I'm looking at a chart view. I can look at this in a data view as well. Scrolling down. This is where things get interesting and you can already see it on my screen. What was the make, model, and year of the last new car that you purchased or leased? This was a written response question. 
And you can see here, themes, AI-driven themes are at the forefront. We show them first. We can see participants purchased Ford vehicles, participants purchased Honda vehicles, and how many mentions, five, four, et cetera, down. Uh, participants purchased Nissan Altimas from 2016 to 2023. This is really interesting analysis of those written responses. If we wanna see those, we just click over here and click on and see the exact answers from which participants gave what answers. But the themes really summarize everything really nicely. What about more complex ideas like when they're writing down their intent or rationale for something? Let's scroll down. Why did you pick that specific vehicle? This is beautiful. Affordability and price, fuel economy and gas mileage, spaciousness and size, reliability and durability. Four themes that are super important along with the mention counts of each. So 10, 8, 8, and 3. So reliability and durability is much less of a concern for at least these people. And you could see if there's a huge drop off from, you know, affordability and price, 10 people said it, uh, which was 50%, down to only three people for reliability and durability, which is coming down on, I think, 6%. Per, uh, 6%. All kinds of themes can be expressed very, very quickly, allows you to analyze that survey data in record time. And then when you scroll up to the top, you have another new capability. You probably noticed it at the top of the screen the entire time here, filters. Because we're dealing in large sample sizes, you will want to filter this data perhaps. And so you can just literally come in here, click on the all filters, uh, the filters. You see, I'm looking at 20 of 20. I create a filter and I might want to just say a new filter, select a category. I can pick people from my demographics, my screeners, or even my survey questions. Uh, I can say, how would you describe your experience with the car? Now I say is, and I can say uh, a three, maybe. I wanna see, no, I wanna see people are very satisfied with their car. So I'm gonna say that, and I'm going to save it. And now that filter has been applied, it's 12 of 20 people. And as I scroll down, I'm only seeing people in that bucket. You can export your data for the selected filter, and you can see it's gonna just export that right into an Excel file. This truly is a huge step forward for user testing. It's not just that we release surveys. There's gonna be a lot of great new capabilities we're gonna be adding on. Surveys are gonna be getting better. You're gonna start seeing things like piping and branching logic coming in in the next release or two. It's gonna be really awesome. That's it for surveys. It's just one piece of the amazing new release that came out just last week. You can start doing those right now absolutely free if you're recruiting internally or with your own list of recruits or respondents. You can do that yourself. User testing when you recruit from us, merely two session units per person. Hopefully I see a lot of people running those right away. Until next time, I will see you later.